so we have a 4 kg block which is resting on an inclined plane and the angle of the inclined plane is 30 degree and the coefficient of a static friction it is a block and the plane is 0 0.7 so and a constant horizontal force is applied to stop the block from moving and we need to find it out what must be the force F this horizontal force so how much force the horizontal force you need to apply horizontally so that it does not move or it doesn't slide okay so when it does not slide that means all the forces onto this onto this block has to be equal to zero so our goal is to find it out all the forces acting onto the system, onto this block. Let me write down here. So see, what are the forces acting onto this block? What I'm doing here, I'm just drawing. So this force is acting horizontally. This force. Okay. This is a force. Force F. So I'm not going to use this one because it's easy for me to show here this force here. And I'm going to resolve this force. So when you have a system on an inclined plane, always resolve the force along the direction of the inclined plane and perpendicular to the inclined plane. Okay? So I'm just going to resolve this one into two components. One along the inclined plane. So this force is along the inclined plane. And the one is perpendicular to the inclined plane. So this is perpendicular to the inclined plane. Okay. So this angle is theta. That means this angle is theta. I'm just calling this an angle theta. Because this is between the angle, between the plane and the horizontal. Between the plane on the horizontal. So this angle is also theta. This angle is theta. It might not be clear here. I'm just calling here as a theta angle. This angle is theta. Okay? So this force is F and this angle is theta. So this component must be F cosine theta and this one must be equal to f sine theta and I don't need this force anymore now because I have resolved this force into two components one along the inclined plane, plane and, the, uh, and the other perpendicular to the inclined plane and now let's see we have another force acting onto the system which is the weight of the of the plane. So the weight always acts vertically downward. So here, yeah, this is the weight. This is the weight. This is the mg. So this angle is theta, this angle is also equal to theta. I'm going to resolve this force into two components. Always resolve along the inclined plane and the perpendicular to the inclined plane. So this component here, perpendicular to the plane would be m g cosine theta. And I have another component which is along the inclined plane. And this component would be m m g sine theta okay so this four component mg sine theta and then we have a normal force this normal force onto the block and the block exerts a force onto the inclined plane the inclined plane also exerts a force onto the block so this is the inclined plane and we do not need this force anymore, the mg, because we already have resolved mg into two components. 
and there's another force too. There's a coefficient of a static friction, and the, and the frictional force acts along this surface, and the frictional force, we call this as an as a F S, the frictional force. Now, so you remember, what is the friction force? The friction force is always equal to mu S times the normal component, the normal vector, the normal force, mu S M. What is the normal force now? If you see along this perpendicular component, this force has to be equal to F sine theta plus mg or sine theta because this force, this acts along in one direction, so all the forces has to be exactly equal. So this normal force is equal to F sine theta plus mg cosine theta. This is your normal force. Okay? So if you find out the normal, uh, the friction force here. And now, now let's take a long the inclined plane direction. As the system is not moving, all the total forces acting onto the inclined plane along the direction of the plane, along this direction has to be equal. So this mg sine theta, mg sine theta, has to be equal to this force, F cosine theta plus the friction force plus this friction force. I would like you to think about this one. Okay? So just think about, I might have to correct one thing here because this problem is asking in order on the block to start, what's the horizontal force F must act on the block to start it moving up the incline plane. It is asking us to, so that this block starts moving up the incline plane. So I need to change this, and that's my bad because, so this force, the friction force has to be opposite in this direction here. Fs, everything remains the same. Nothing changes because in order to, if the block, we have to, we have to it should not move upward. So the friction force must act downward. So the mg sine theta, so I need to change this equation too. So you see, what does the question ask you? That you applying horizontal force, and this, this force is just so that it just starts moving up the inclined plane. So if it is start, if it is tending to move up along the inclined plane, the first friction force must be acting opposite to the motion. So that's why this force has to be acting opposite to the motion. And now, mg, so this all forces again, mg sine theta plus friction force, this has to be equal to the component of the applied force, F cosine theta. So just plug in now. So life is so easy now. So just have to plug in everything here. Mg sine theta. The friction force is equal to mu S F sine theta plus mg cosine theta, this is equal to f cosine theta. Okay. So we just have to solve for f now. mg sine theta plus Theta plus mu s mg cosine theta 
this equals to f cosine theta. You can plug in the values that would be simple too, but I prefer to get the expression first. M G sine theta plus u s m g cosine theta. This is equal to f cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. So the f, the force, would be m g sine theta plus mu s m g cosine theta equal to cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. I'm just plugging all the values here now. What is the mass? Mass is 4 gram. G value is 9.8. Sine theta. Sine theta is 30 degree. Plus mu s. The coefficient of a static function is given 0 0.7. So this is 0 0.7 times mass is 4. G is 9.8 times cosine 30 degree. Again, cosine 30 degree minus 0 0.7 times sine 30 degree. Use your calculator, then if you solve this one, then the answer you will get is 85 Newton. So this is your correct answer. Okay? So you see, all you have to do is resolve all the vectors, all the forces along the inclined plane and perpendicular to the inclined plane. And if the system is not moving, then the total force has to be equal. That's what this problem is asking.